Yamaha's 2020 R1. Shift Cam Tech. The fight for the ultimate power plant. Who will be king? Welcome to the Motor Banter Show where we talk about all things motorcycling. I am Motor Man and let's get started. Now, unless you've been living under a rock like some big ass lizard, you'll likely know that Yamaha have released their new 2020 R1. Mainly changed with an eye at Euro 5, the bike now takes after the R6 with its far sleeker headlight that looks like a praying mantis about to f up. Let's have a look at the video in case you are one of the 1% that hasn't seen it. What a nice machine. <laughs> I mean, the styling is next to light. Whew, so nice. Hold on, hold on. Listen to that. One more time. Bang! If there's ever been a sound. <laughs> if there's ever been a sound. Look at these guys. Look at this guy go, man. I mean, do you know of a nicer looking bike than this R1M? What a machine. Look at the way he's backing it in, slab control, get some engine braking into that corner. Oof. Man, I would give my left testicle and half a rib to ride one of these. Ah, oh, history, your future, we are one. Look at that. <clears throat> Now my personal opinion is it looks very, very nice. I'm super happy that they decided to go for the sleek R6 look. Ever since the new R6 was released, I thought it looked better than the R1. A slight shame that they have decided to not go like reverse crank on it, but a very nice machine nonetheless. New styling is very welcome, particularly what appears to be the darker toned R1M's carbon fiber. Now the M variant being my personal sexy bike of 2018, 2017, 2016, yeah. Now before we come on to the performance of the new R1 and also a mention for the S1000 RR, there's something to be said about Suzuki's GSX-R1000. Shift cam tech in the Suzuki works. It's proven. And there's next to no issues since its arrival. But BMW and their new 2020 RR, is it broke? Is it flawed? Well, according to multiple sources and videos on the web, there's a serious flat spot in the middle of the power band and it would appear to be a sizable issue. Has the bike been optimized for track speeds and has that affected the road ride ability? It would seem so. What's good for shift cam if it doesn't add to the mid range? Isn't that the point? Now, reports suggest that this may be a fueling issue due to Euro 5. And from my personal experience, my current bike, my 2016 Yamaha MT-09, there's a very noticeable increase in low down torque when you compare it to the 2019 MT-09. And this is definitely down to the standard exhaust being more restrictive and the new bike meeting those Euro 4 or Euro 5 requirements. In theory, this would mean an ECU flash on the new RR and you're good to go. It would appear that as 2020 models are releasing and the stricter Euro 5 emissions take laws take effect, that an ECU flash may be vital in getting the most out of your machine now and in the years to come. 
Having said this, regarding the BMW specifically, it's a very expensive machine and personally, I don't think it's right that you absolutely have to flash your ECU to get the most out of the machine. There's obviously some kind of pancake style flat spot in the power band and, and personally, for that much money, I just don't think that's cool. What are your thoughts on the new double R and also of course the R1? Is shift cam a bit of a hype? There has been serious hype around this new 2020 BMW. What about the new look? Do you love it? Like it? Hate it? I'm undecided. I want to see it in person. I think it looks a little bit more plasticky than the old one. I can pretty confidently say that. What do you guys think? Anyway, I've got to admit that I'm really looking forward to seeing both of these new thousands. And uh, what does that mean for the MT-10? Anyway guys, this has been the Motor Banter Show. Leave a comment below that like button and let me know what you would like me to discuss in the next episode. Stay safe guys and I will see you next time. Motor Man out.